This is case number 10-D-19, in which the petitioner, original petitioner Jessica Pruitt, she appears in person, and uh, counsel Michelle Rusin. The respondent, Eric Pruitt, appears here in person, or appears by counsel, John Butler. This matter comes on as a further status today with regard to parenting time for Mr. Pruitt. I have received a further report from the Guardian of Item Day, January 27th, 2012. Um, I've reviewed that. I'm going to place that in the order that file. It appears we are in, at an impasse, and if a part, either party want to address the, guard, the issues the Guardian of Item has raised. Well, I can tell you this. My client was thrilled with the report. Um, he is going through and getting the evaluation done. He looks at it as, as a positive thing and wants to get the evaluation done. Um, the best way I can describe Mr. Cruitt is that there's all of us here, and Mr. Pruitt is over here. He's not dangerous, he's odd. And so he looks at things through a glass that the rest of us wouldn't look through. But he sees it as positive. He's currently working to rent a, a place, he, he says, in the Pleasant County area. And I, I know he's talked to several people. I don't know how effective he will be. But he understands he needs to, based upon the recommendations, find somewhere here that he can assure everyone that he's going to have somewhere to visit with his child. And so he's doing these things. He had um, scheduled a uh, screening today down in Parkersburg, and um, I don't know the details of it, but his, he had trouble with his truck, and he had planned on being here so he could share that with us. He called me this morning and said, he was going to have to reschedule that for next week, but as soon as that got accomplished, he would get me the names and all that and the details. So we would have that accomplished, and uh, we would go, you know, I would share that with counsel, and, and we would get that accomplished. Um, so we believe the mental health evaluation is in Parkersburg? Yes. Um, he said it was an off, that whoever he was he talked to, that it was somehow, it was, it was, somehow connected to Kids First, which didn't make any sense to me, but there's a lot of stuff he tells me that I'm not sure I always understand because it's his viewpoint of the world. And, you know, again, um, a lot of the things that he looks at is his viewpoint of the world, and it doesn't always make sense, but it is his viewpoint. Um, he's trying. He's trying. Um, I, I will say this. Um, you know, I, I don't. You know, I, I know counsel has a different opinion on on in representing her client, but I have listened to these people bicker and argue by by their emails and their back and forth. And she threatened to her, and our counsel forwarded to me that she was going to file a DV over Christmas, and and we had no visitation because we had no no. Uh, supervising third party and all that because she was, you know, felt threatened by his emails, and I, and I've read most of his emails, and I will say this: uh, these two people will never be able to communicate effectively because he likes to talk and say a lot of things, and if you want to, you can interpret those as being threatening. I don't know that he's ever done anything threatening, but. You could interpret that way. I have got him in the direction where he is working on getting a place where, while he may not move to West Virginia, he will rent a place in this area so that he will have visitation here. Okay? Now, he understands initially that he has to be supervised and assure her and the court that he will initially be supervised so that they, they understand that he ha he's not going to, you know, by neglect or otherwise, you know, place his child in any kind of a, a dangerous circumstance. Now, that offends him on, on a certain level because, 
you know, he feels that's like he has to test out to be a parent. Okay? And he's, you know, there's a part of him that says, well, she didn't have to test out to be a parent. Why do I have to test out to be a parent? And I keep explaining to him that that's just how it is, and he can either beat his head against a brick wall or run that gauntlet and get past it and move on. Well, today at least he's in a pretty good mood, and he's willing to run that gauntlet and do it. So that's where we're at at this point. Um, he's working on getting the, the mental hygiene scheduling or the, you know, whatever you want to call it. He's working on getting uh, a rental place. He will be moving back and forth between Pittsburgh and here because at least at this point he's, he has a couple jobs up there that are going to keep him tied up there. I don't know ultimately that he'll stay in the Pittsburgh area. It depends on how he can foster work in this area for the type of work that he does. But at least for now, he's willing to pay for a place down here so that when he moves from supervised visitation to unsupervised visitation, as she and the court feels comfortable that, he's going to have some place where he can do that. Okay? And that's, you know... So the guardian ad litem can see that, approve that, and um, he can work through kids first. So that's where we're at from his perspective. Uh, but it really took that letter from the guardian ad litem to kind of, I don't know, get it to sink in. That and, uh, while it's attorney-client privilege, several rather caustic emails from me to basically tell him that I was tired of his if you'll forgive the expression, crap, uh, of his um, railing at society, at the court system, and her. Um, you know, they um, exchange emails that just you know, waste a lot of their time um, and do nothing but fuel this words between them but lack of communication. So, uh, I mean, I guess I would say that he has a failure to communicate with most people, not yeah. just my client. <laughs> yeah, he does. He does. And I don't know how to fix that because, quite frankly, there are some people in life that, you know, if it were our job to fix them, you know, we'd be in trouble. I can't fix him. I can just say that, that I have convinced him to quit railing at her and railing at the court system and, and try to do what he's supposed to do. At least at this point in time, I see he's making progress, and so I would report that to the court. Other than that, um, I don't think we're ready for any kind of a final hearing at this point. I think we need um, him to take these steps, let this expert evaluation occur, let us see what that says, let us get him in some kids' first supervised visits and see what they have to say when they observe him under these visits. Um, I know this has drug on longer than it, in a normal case should have, but I think that will ultimately be in his best interest. It certainly will be in the child's best interest, and it will certainly be in mom's best interest to uh, make her uh, feel that um, we've done everything we can to protect their child. Well, I think family courts have an obligation to both parents. I know Mrs. Cruitt's frustrated, uh, probably a lot of the reason that uh, she separated from Mr. Cruitt and ultimately divorced him is what we are seeing here now. Uh, however, she chose him to be the father of her child, and that's a choice that you, unless there's an adoption or abandonment or, or something of that nature, it's, it's a choice that you can't undo. I, and uh, I, at that point, I think family courts have to shadow um, abuse and neglect procedures or or, or, rec or that type of, that type of consideration is what a family court has to undergo. Uh, certainly, Mr. Pruitt has shown um, uh, his actions haven't matched his words at, at times. And he hasn't shown up for hearings. Uh, um, he has shown um, an instability, at 
least in far as his living conditions, because we do have in the file, he lived in Pittsburgh, and then he was in Grafton or more, and maybe Morgantown. Uh, at one point was undergoing uh, mental health treatment, I, I believe, and that might have been prior to your representation of him. Uh, Mr. Butler, I think that you represented that to the court and why he couldn't make it to a hearing. Yeah, and we disclosed that. Um, it, was, it was a treatment, but it really wasn't. It was more counseling than it was so, any kind of a I mean, the, the, ultimate, the ultimate consideration for the court is, is the safety of the child and the best interest of the child. And of course, it's always in the best interest of a child uh, to have two parents unless one parent is... Uh, basically not capable and that's a, a pretty low standard meaning that one parent might be way better than the other parent <laughs> but uh, and and as counsel knows the abuse and neglect bar is fairly low uh, Mr. Cruitt uh, may never be the parent that Mrs. Cruitt would want him to be or even feels that he should be or uh, feels that it may not be good for her child to be exposed to him uh, however that May still, the court may end up having to disagree with Mrs. Cruitt over that if Mr. Cruitt's able to show some level of, of stability. Uh, I guess uh, what I can say, Mr. Butler, is uh, we'll see what Mr. Cruitt does. Uh, the proof will be in the doing. Um, counsel will, uh, is doing his best effort <laughs> to, to put a good face on this, uh, but again, it will have to be a wait and see kind of thing. I think the order ought to reflect that we follow the GAL report recommendations, uh, that, uh, that he have such an evaluation. I'm very interested that he obtain a stable place to live and exhibit a stable lifestyle. Uh, yeah. that's, that has been the really sticker in this case. I think we can accommodate, uh, and the, the guardian item basically puts it on, on Mr. Pruitt to come up with some alternative to kids first. I'm, I'm reading between the lines here, I don't think it's appropriate for a court to read between the lines of Mr. Ellison's report, that there may be a lot more that Mr. Ellison and Kids First wants to report about Mr. Cruitt, but hasn't. That may come out in another hearing, I don't know. Uh, at this point, I, I think I'm on a need-to-know basis, and I don't need to know <laughs> at this point, because Mr. Cruitt uh, is an entire, you know, there's no uh, danger to the child as the orders exist right now. Mrs. Cruitt is free to set up something that she, that she sees fit uh, at this point. Um, but uh, like I say, the proof will be in Mr. Cruitt's, uh, what Mr. Cruitt actually does at this point. Well, I think certainly I understand why uh, Ms. Cruitt doesn't want to supervise. And, I, and in truth, I think, I think in the totality of the circumstances, all it does, because of his odd nature, I think it would draw him away from spending time with the child, and it would focus him on his, his, and you don't want to call it communication, his ranting toward her. And, and that, that would really take him away from spending time with the child. I mean, un unless she would be the last had, person to really be yeah, affected. Unless she has supervised. several other adults around her in a secure situation. I mean, uh, I don't think I would ever order that. But I, no. I, for them to be one-on-one -on -one at this point, I don't think would be even productive for the child. That's what I'm saying. Is it, it's, not, it's not a productive visit if she supervises because he has this level of issues with her that he can't seem to, when he's around her, get off of and then focus on the child. And that's exhibited every time they communicate, whether it be by email or anything else. So in the best interest of the visitation, it needs to be somewhere else where she's not there. It just is. And, it, and, and I don't... It, I don't see it as rising the level of domestic violence. I just see it, it, it takes away from productive visitation. Well, I know. I was, look, I was looking for the one email or the text that he sent. That, it, it, it concerned me. It wasn't just her. It was concerned me. It was pretty threatening, but I can't find There's it right now. Christmas. I yeah. probably have it on my no, phone. The one that we looked at in November when I told you to go get a DV order, yeah, but I don't, I don't know exactly what it was. But it, it, he was it, wishing me dead because yeah. I was trying to arrange for alternative visitation for Christmas, 
And the next day that started, I had to call the police. I called because I, I thought he was in Parkersburg at the time. He told me it, he already had a place, and I saw you the very next day. I told him to quit emailing you. Mm -hmm. I mean, he basically said I had an illusion of safety through my social network, and I took that as threatening. Mm -hmm. You see, he just talks and talks and talks. And, you know, the emails he sends to me are just, you know, volumes I, of I, stuff. I, I, you know, I understand. But, you know, of course, also, we, we are affected by other cases and, and outside events. And while I certainly have had ten times more mothers abuse their children than fathers, we had a father kill his kids I out know. in oh, Washington on a supervised visitation. Yes. I know. Um, you know, Washington, which is which is a more progressive state, West Virginia, evidently has social workers who will take children to a home. home, and children ended up here. Um, I know. I read about it. And that was a father who was on national TV proclaiming that he would never hurt his wife and his kids. Yeah. Um, seemed really seemingly clean cut. Um, you know, so. Oftentimes courts are, are frustratingly conservative <laughs> because we feel like if we're going to make a mistake, we'd rather make it a mistake where the, uh, for the safety of the child. So it really it takes a person in Mr. Cruitt's position to prove himself at this point. He says, yes, why should I prove himself? Well, it takes more than a sex act to be a father. Uh, in his defense, I wasn't there aggravating <laughs> them. I waited for the DV. It didn't arrive. I didn't. I, I did not aggravate Shelley about the visitation. No, he hasn't. Uh, because quite frankly, I knew he was over the top. I knew he was just he was mm -hmm. ranting over the holidays, and and, and I, I always feel like one of the you know one of the responsible steps that a party takes is getting counsel, and. Mm -hmm. That usually gets you in the door, right or wrong. He took a responsible step by hiring counsel, who can then speak for him and tell him what is, is appropriate and what's not appropriate, at least possibly steer him in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Mr. Butler, what it looks like is that, 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 that he's been steered in the right direction. We'll just see if he does it or not. A psychological evaluation would be valuable in this case. Yeah, yeah I agree. Um, yeah. I agree. Uh, well, it took him going through the holidays and getting very, very frustrated, and, and, and then he turned on me. When he, when he turned on me and started telling me, what are you doing for me? And then we got to have an interesting dialogue about, okay, what have I done for you? What have you done to screw this up? And so and we had some interesting and, and, and exchanges. And Mrs. Crowe, I understand, you know, you have to take off work for these hearings and you've had to hire yeah. an attorney. But, you know, uh, for the sake of your child, we need to take every step that we can um, like I say, we didn't put you in this position. You, you married Mr. Cruitt, to put it crassly, and and now your child is owed uh, every every chance to have two parents. If that doesn't happen, well, then it won't be the court's fault or your fault. It'll be Mr. Cruitt's fault. That that's the that's what it comes down to. It may involve you having even a few more short hearings uh, before we we get to a conclusion in this matter. Hopefully, it's a conclusion that that Mr. Cruitt rises to the occasion. I'm not available any in April. I know that sounds extreme, but I have a big trial and then we're going on a trip. So. Thank you. Right. Which this is mid, this is mid February. Yeah. So, yeah. all right. Uh, really, I think if we come back in early May, then maybe early May will probably be about right for a yeah. psychological evaluation. I say we get the evaluation done and then we see if we can't get the kids ver first supervised visits. And by the time we get some of them under our belt, May would be appropriate anyway. Yeah. All right. If you want to do today's order, Mr. Butler, that way you'll, you'll have control over how quick the hearing gets back. Okay. All right. I will. Thank you. I can do that. Any order would follow the guardian line of what I am ordering the psychological evaluation so you can tell him okay. that the judge ordered it. Oh, he got that, and he finally felt we had progress, and he called to set it up. He was happy. All right.